Warning, the following video was created by somebody who, for the sake of this video, has put on his purple glasses. This video shall be filled with a whole lot of hopium. Side effects may include reaching, speaking things into existence, and Super Bowl fever. Viewer discretion is advised. How many stocks do I really have in stock? Aye, one, two, three, four, five, plus five. Aye. Ravens flock. I hope everybody's having a good day so far. You should be. It's a victory Tuesday for us. We're coming off of a Monday night beatdown against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We put up 40 on them. We final score was 41 to 31. There's not much to really complain about in this game. Um, there was a lot to be excited about. Um, you know, a few things I wanted to start with was we got off to a rough start, really, where, you know, Lamar got sacked on back to back plays, which was the first time in his career where he got sacked on back to back plays on an opening drive. Um, one of those sacks, Roger, Roger Rosengarden just flat out got beat. It, it is what it is. You know, of course, we're going to give that a pass because one, he's a rookie. And two, I feel like he, he and the rest of the line bounced back pretty well for the rest of the game, even though we were being heavily blitzed. I believe they said we were blitzing 61%. I mean, the Buccaneers were blitzing 61% of the time. And I still feel like we handled it very well. Uh, that backwards pass that Lamar was throwing to Zay Flowers that ended up counting as a fumble, that was definitely not a good look. That's, I mean, that's something you're not going to see happen too often, but it definitely was not a good look. And then Zion McCollum, the the corner for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers he picked it up and dragged like what seemed like a million people along with him all the way back to the end zone I know he probably got like a drug test or a surprise drug test this morning that's probably what happened to him but that ended up not counting anyway because he was down by contact but that still was obviously something you would want to see cleaned up and not happen again Another thing I didn't like seeing was Lamar lead blocking for Derrick Henry like yeah that looks nice and we can all say oh that's really nice of him being a team player but i'm not a big fan of quarterbacks running out and being lead blockers for running backs especially this early in the season now if this is like you know the super bowl or then it's a different story obviously everything's on the line but i just didn't want to see that hopefully that's the last time we see that but speaking of good blocking, Ronnie Stanley is continuing to show people that he's back. He's showing me that he's back. I thought he was finished, but either way, he's proven everybody wrong. He's proven that he's still that guy. He's playing like a top two left tackle in football right now. He is still not giving up a sack all season. And really my, my favorite moment or one of my favorite moments from this game was early on in the game, watching him like showing that he still has that speed getting out in in the open field and blocking for zay flowers on that screen pass that zay was able to take like 11 12 yards up the field just because of that ronnie stanley block so i was very excited to see that all pro ronnie is back in the building uh, speaking of zay flowers unfortunately he didn't do much in this game because he got banged up pretty early when he was um when he was on when he was running for i think that was like a 20 yard gain or something but one of the defenders for the buccaneers they landed on his ankle kind of rolled it a bit so he still was in the game technically but you could tell that they more so had him there just as to be like a decoy he wasn't he clearly wasn't really he wasn't 100 percent it's still yet to be seen if he's going to be ready by the time we play cleveland next week but we'll see I wouldn't be surprised if he sat out that game, but it's still yet to be seen if that's going to be the case. Rashad Bateman came out and had literally the best game of his career. He show, continues to build up that connection with Lamar Jackson, especially on these off script plays like that 60 yard play where Lamar's scrambling outside of the pocket and he's looking downfield. He throws a dot to Bateman and Bateman ends up going for like about I think 20 yards of yak I feel like he could have got a little bit more but he kind of slowed down I don't know if he slowed down because he needed somebody to block for him and he was hoping somebody could like block in a way that could allow him to like maneuver a little bit further out and score or he might have just ran out of gas who knows but either way that one catch was a momentum shifting play 
we pretty much took over for the rest of the game after that point bateman went crazy in this game he had four catches for 121 yards and a touchdown including that 49 yard uh, deep shot that he ended up catching for a touchdown which was very exciting for all of us to see of course because one thing that it definitely feels like we've kind of lacked over the past two or three seasons has been deep shots like it feels like we haven't been taken enough or just haven't been hidden hidden on enough but we hit in this game and it was very exciting to see mark andrews is back he looks like you know he's looking like his old self again this was the game where he officially broke the franchise record for most receiving touchdowns he had um at the time when he broke it he i believe I believe it was dennis pitter who had the record or todd heap i can't remember it was either it was a it was another tight end that had the record but either way he broke the record and that he also added another touchdown on top of that so now he's continuing to extend the record further all of our tight ends were eaten in this game again we saw even though isaiah likely had a quiet game he still had two very key catches on third down in third down situations and one of those catches was a very tough catch where he really had to extend his whole body and he reeled that thing in i was very excited to see that charlie kolar caught a, a very difficult catch outside the numbers i think it was third down it was still a very important play when we needed to move the ball down the field this offense the offense that we're seeing this year this is what we thought last year's offense would be you remember last year when everybody kept saying hey there's not necessarily a a bona fide number one receiver like certain teams like uh like the vikings for example who have justin jefferson it's not necessarily that type of team but it's still a good team because everybody can step up and anybody could go off this year's offense is that for, for everybody that kept saying that last year it was kind of true but then you know it didn't really work out that way when it mattered most but this year's offense is what we thought last year's offense was easily it is way better everybody is way more comfortable we the chemistry is undeniable todd munkin is cooking i'm very excited to see that it feels like john harbaugh is finally getting out of the way of todd munkin because remember last year john harbaugh specifically said that he still wanted to include a lot of greg roman's rushing plays and i always felt like that was a symbol or not a symbol but like a, a red flag to basically just imply that he's kind of restricting todd munkin and not allowing todd munkin to fully go into his bag and look like the offensive coordinator we've seen in college like at georgia but over the past couple weeks it does seem like john harbaugh has gotten out of the way and todd munkin is on fire right now everybody is flourishing in their lanes right now um justice hill had another good game again shout out to justice hill week after week he's not a, a big time name but week after week he shows up whether it's catching these um these short screen passes and taking it 20 yards up the field every single time or whether it's picking up a key block he's doing his job i'm very excited about that uh on another note our special teams is bad <laughs> like i don't even know what else to say really like and that's really frustrating because that's supposed to be john harbaugh's specialty and our special teams just doesn't look impressive honestly like to be fair though justin tucker looks like he's gotten back to his old self so that's exciting to see he hit a 50 yard field goal but again our special teams doesn't look impressive we are the only team so far since they changed the kickoff and made the new dynamic kickoff we are the only team in the nfl that has allowed people to successfully um, retrieve an onside kick not only once but twice we have allowed this to happen twice which is beyond embarrassing we are the only team in the nfl who has allowed that like that's crazy and it's not a surprise anymore like back back before they changed the kickoff it would at least be somewhat of a surprise now they tell you ahead of time that they're good that's neither here nor there i don't want to be too negative this was a very exciting game on the defensive side of things 
you know, it still seems like more than anything, there's just a lot of communication issues. That Mike Evans touchdown that the Buccaneers got at the start of the game, I believe, was a good example of that. It seems like Brandon Stevens was supposed to pass off Mike to Marcus Williams, and Marcus wasn't fully prepared, and Baker recognized that, and Mike Evans and Baker had chemistry, and so they were able to exploit that wide open hole that was created in that moment and by the time Brandon Stevens realized that Marcus wasn't going to be able to get there in time he tried to come back into the picture but it was it was way too late at that point overall I think our defense had an okay game I know a lot of people are still not satisfied with it that's understandable but I do think the box score is misleading at the end of the day the Buccaneers scored like 13 points in garbage time you know like it's not like they were you know now to be fair to them there were a couple touchdowns that they almost had early in the game but it didn't go their way when it comes to like flags and stuff like that but either way we held them to 18 points for most of the game and they they tried to make a run towards the end in garbage time but it, it really didn't matter that much the second thing that i that i was very excited about defensively really or the first thing was Marlon Humphreys really let his presence be felt in this game. He's like it seems like Marlon is not only back to his old his old self, his 2019 self. It seems like he's <laughs> he's kind of tired of people taking shots at like his podcast cuz he knows that the Ravens flock doesn't want him to be distracted, but he's showing that he can still, you know, he could still do both at the end of the day. Like he's really having a good season so far. He's kind of evolving his game into being more of a ball hawk i know people would have preferred that he had been this type of ball hawk back when he was you know punching you know he's getting like forcing a lot of fumbles but you know at the end of the day sometimes people they may not be particularly good at one thing but they can evolve and become good at it later on um, a good example i think with comparing it to like basketball i think would be like derrick rose like Derrick Rose in the early part of his career when he was still with the Bulls before he got injured he was an electric player he was an, a freak athlete but he wasn't that good at three he wasn't good at th shooting threes and he was an okay free throw shooter but still shooting wasn't his main thing but over over the years you know once he started to get banged up and he wasn't the same athlete anymore he did work to become a better three-point shooter so you look at somebody like Marlon Humphreys He's not as, in my opinion, I don't think he's as fast as he was when he was younger, which is is to be expected. He's older, but I just think he kind of morphed his game to now just, you know, now he's kind of a ball hawk and that's exciting to see. He had two picks in his game. He left early with a knee injury. Hopefully it's not too serious. So we'll see what updates we get from that. The second pick that he got, that was an extremely impressive catch. Like he snatched the ball out of the air he snatched it out of Nate Wiggins hands honestly that was low-key about to be Nate Wiggins first interception but Marlon just completely snatched it which I was excited to see just to see the the aggression like the you know the focus he had because we know that as a team we've seen a lot of missed opportunities when it comes to interceptions our Darius Washington even in this game he missed an opportunity for an interception and also Nate Wiggins, there was a, like one or two other situations in this game alone where he could have had a pick, but it didn't work out either because he just slipped or because the ball popped up in the air. And by the time he realized it was, it was still in the air, it was already hitting, hitting the ground. We allowed more rushing yards in this game compared to any other game. Like they, they didn't do too crazy, but they, I believe they got about 130 yards on the ground. Uh, I still think overall we have a good run defense, but you know I knew that this game would be a test because this is easily the best run. This is the best backfield that the Buccaneers have had in a while, so I, I figured this would be a test. We got to the QB a few times, not as many times as people would have liked, but I still think we did a solid job of that. Owe got a sack. Odafe uh, Owe got a sack. Al Van Noy got another sack. Both of them are on pace to have career years. Kavius Robinson had what should have been a strip sack, you know, but unfortunately it was called back because I believe it was uh, Brandon Stevens got called for holding. So it is what it is. I'm very excited to see Tavius get some snaps. It seemed like they were kind of experimenting with the lineup because it seemed like this game, 
we didn't see as much of Matabike and Travis Jones as we normally do. We saw a lot of Brett, Brett Urban. We saw a lot of Yannick Ngakwe. We saw a lot of also, obviously, Tavius Robinson. I don't know. Maybe they were just trying to rest Matabike and Travis Jones. But, I mean, they still were in the game. But it felt like they weren't in it for as many snaps as we're used to seeing them be in it for. Matabike almost got a sack. But, unfortunately, he just, he just took a bad angle. He couldn't get there. But I know a lot of people still feel like we need to go out and get a a premier edge rusher i don't think that's the case i really don't at the end of the day i think we have to recognize that this ravens defense it's really become a sunk cost fallacy like we've poured so much resources when it comes to money and draft picks into that side of the ball i don't think we should keep going down that endless cycle of dumping money into it over and over again and draft picks into it over and over again with hopes that we can build this goliath of a defense at the end of the day i think we need to be patient i think we need to trust that these guys are going to get it done and there's signs showing you that they can i mean we have guys playing well regardless of what anybody says owe is playing well i know people don't care about Owe getting holding penalties on him but at the end of the day i do think depending on the situation it should count for something when you look at the fact that Owe was able to draw a holding penalty on tristan worse i do think that should count for something it, it, even if it's just a moral victory i still think that matters tristan worse is one of the best tackles in football he hasn't had a holding penalty in like two or three years but I can't even say no I was gonna say something else I can't even say that because there's really nobody that we could get at this point of the season especially for cheap the only option would maybe be Jadavian Clowney but isn't he banged up with the Panthers right now like I I, I don't think there's anybody realistically we could, we could get I'm seeing a lot of Ravens fans say we should go after Max Crosby I don't think that's realistic he uh, Max Crosby is the heart and soul of the the Raiders they're not going to let him go for less than multiple first round picks like he is not only he's, is he one of the best edge rushers he's also the face of their franchise right now he's all they have left they're not going to let him go for a small price so it would cost a lot of draft picks and also it would just cost a lot of money now i'm not a big believer in the salary cap but if you are at the end of the day we we simply can't afford him but i again i don't think we should give up too early zach or he's not doing that great of a job but again he's still a rookie dc i do believe by the bye we will have this all figured out but i've gone on long enough here let me know what your thoughts are what did you take away from this game were you excited about this game and is there anything that you think we could have done better